So good morning, I'm Leo Duca. I'll have the pleasure to uh, chair this session this morning, and I'll also be responsible for mispronouncing numerous Asian names. I'm very sorry in advance for that. Uh, we'll be starting with uh, limits of polynomial packing for Z, PK, and FPK, and the talk will be, uh, it's a joint work between Zheng He Xion and Kiwo Li, and the talk will be given by Kiwo. Um, okay, uh, thank you for the introduction and thank you for coming. I know it's early morning and we had a party last night. So yeah, thank you for coming. Um, today I will talk about <clears throat> limits of polynomial packings for um, ZPK, which is integer ring modulo P to the K and finite field F P to the K. Uh, this is a joint work with my advisor, Zhang Yi Chan. So I want to begin with a sketch of our work. So the starting point of our work is an observation that um, an, an observation that very similar mathematical objects uh, are being studied independently in uh, subfields of cryptography. Uh, so we abstract these concepts um, as what we call polynomial packing and initiate formal and unified study of polynomial packing. And then we um, prove some upper bounds and impossibility results. Um, uh, that is, we prove that uh, we cannot achieve certain level of efficiency and uh, we cannot construct some uh, packing math, polynomial packing satisfying some uh, desirable features. And next, um, coming back to our context, uh, we observe um, how these results imply in the context, what, what, what these results imply in the context. So yeah, for the sake of limited time, I will first define polynomial packing and then uh, see how it abstracts existing um, concepts. So what is polynomial uh, packing method? Uh, it is a pair of algorithms, uh, pack and unpack. So, uh, so pack is uh, uh, it's a uh, pack literally packs uh, some uh, several copy of small small ring R into a large polynomial ring script R and unpack which is opposite of uh, a pack. Uh, as the title suggests, uh, as our title suggests, we are mostly uh, concerned with the case where R is at PK or FPK. Uh, we measure the packing density, uh, which is uh, uh, we measure the efficiency of our uh, packing method by its packing density, which is defined as the ratio between the bit size of uh, packed rings and the bit size of the polynomial ring. Uh, without any algebraic structure, uh, polynomial packing is no more than just labeling. So uh, what we find useful and interesting is uh, degree D packing, which satisfies a kind of homomorphic property. That is for any polynomial P of degree not greater than D, uh, we have this commutative diagram where P is uh, applied element-wise in the left side, uh, that is, uh, uh, if we pack message into a polynomial and evaluate P on the polynomial and unpack it, we get the result which we uh, get if we directly apply P to the messages element wise. Uh, to prevent future confusion, I want to remark that unpack algorithm may differ for each multiplicative level. Uh, so this is how we formally define uh, uh, degree D packing uh, in our paper. It is pretty short, but you do not have to read it right now. I just wanted to make sure that actually degree D packing is defined as a collection of packing methods. So unpack may differ for uh, each multipl multiplicative level. So now with the context. Uh, first, homomorphic encryption. It is a crypto system which supports computation on encrypted data. That is, for a class of functions, we have procedure called eval, 
uh, which makes this diagram commute so that if we encrypt a plain text uh, and apply eval p on it and decrypt it, we get the results which we get if we directly apply p to the plain text. Another remark is that concurrent HE schemes are often based on ring LWE problem rather than plain LWE problem for efficiency regarding uh, heat dyes and et cetera. Um, this includes a renowned uh, BGV scheme and FAV scheme, which, uh, which is uh, in mainstream in HE community. But what does it really mean to be a RLW-based homomorphic encryption? That means our plain text is now a scary looking polynomial ring and our scheme is homomorphic up to computation, uh, computations, namely additions and multiplications of this polyno polynomial ring. So using ring LWE enhances efficiency, but <clears throat> what about practical usability? So this scary looking polynomial ring structure does not seem to reflect uh, practical reality. So like who would uh, want to compute on this polynomial ring for real life applications? Uh, so the great idea of Smart Enver Kotaran was essentially to use polynomial packing for more friendly structure or in their language to use homomorphic DMD operation. Uh, that is, if we attach uh, this packing method in front of HE scheme, we can use HE scheme with regard to more friendly structure R while not losing too much efficiency by uh, embedding, um, not losing too much efficiency in amortized sense by embedding as many elements as we can. Um, here are some examples of HE packings. Uh, the traditional packing method by Smart and Berg turn uh, pack messages through CRT ring isomorphism. Thus, their method naturally has uh, degree infinity and perfect density of one. Uh, the special case where the cycloatomic polynomial fully splits modulo P is still universally used in HE applications. But a limitation of the traditional method is that it does not provide uh, packing for general ZPK, especially when P is small. Uh, in this regard, uh, a packing method for Z2K was first suggested by Gentry, Halevi, Smart, and later generalized to ZPK by Halevi and Shoup. Uh, I will call this method uh, Halevi packing in this talk. And their idea was to pack messages only at the constant term of CRT components of the polynomial ring. Um, considering uh, ZPK was to improve the yeah, uh, considering that PK was to improve the efficiency of FHE bootstrapping, but this leads to slight, a significant loss in packing density. And new packing density, uh, new packing methods were suggested along the recent developments in SHE based MPC over Z2K, uh, which we call speeds family, if you are familiar with that term. An observation made by Overdrive 2K was that degree two packing is enough for beavers, beavers triple generation and they achieve density of roughly one over five. And megahertz 2K of all of work by our team achieved density of roughly a half. Next, I will briefly talk about RMFE. Um, in cryptography, using large field is often required due to um, mathematical structure or security reasons. On the other hand, we usually want to compute over small fields, namely F2, the Boolean field. So the idea of Cascudo, Kramer, Singh, and Yuan was to study this reverse multiplication friendly embedding, which embeds uh, algebraic structure of copies of small fields into a larger field. For example, embedding copies of Boolean fields into an, a binary extension field. Essentially, uh, RMFEs are degree two packing from n copies of FQ into the uh, into uh, FQ to the D, which is isomorphic to FQX, quotiented by uh, some irreducible polynomial. 
Uh, and I want to know that, so, so indeed it, uh, RMF is indeed a polynomial packing. And I want to know that, uh, that RMF is now a standard tool in information theoretical multi-party computation and is also being used in zero knowledge. Um, now theorems and implications. Uh, in this talk, I will only state theorems for ZPK case. Analogous theorems holds for FPK, and you can check the paper if you are interested. And also, we will not talk about proofs. A short remark is that although our theorems may seem very natural, um, proofs are slightly involved due to algebraic subtleties. So if you're interested, you can check the proofs. But honestly, I do not recommend to do that because proof is not the fun part of this paper. Um, first, we have an upper bound on packing density. Uh, roughly speaking, um, density of degree D packing method is not greater than one over D. And to be more precise, we have this bound. So we can check that this is consistent with traditional packing, which is degree infinity packing and has perfect density of one. But in that case, the polynomial uh, the cyclotomic polynomial fully split. So this small d is one. So yeah, this makes sense. Um, and so implications. First, Megasuke achieves a near optimal density as a degree two packing for Z2K as, as since its density is roughly a half. And second, um, our proof of FPK version of this Theorem implies a new and more general proof for upper bound on rate of RMFE. Uh, here, general means it can be extended to higher degree, not just degree two. Uh, and last, our theorem implies the first upper bound on rate of RMFE over Galois ring, which is first considered by Kramer and Rambaud and Singh. And level consistency. So, we call a packing method level consistent if the packing structure is same for all multiplicative level. Uh, since level consistency directly implies degree infinity packing, this is desirable for the use in fully homomorphic encryption. And if a packing is consistent, then we can perform homomorphic computations between different multiplicative levels. So what is this good for? For example, we need these kinds of operation during reshare protocol, which is an important building block of SHE-based MPC, um, mainly speed family, yeah. So our theorem says uh, we cannot pack more than the number of irreducible factors of quotient polynomial modulo P. Uh, first, um, our theorem implies that the Halley packing for ZPK is an optimal level consistent packing with respect to packing density. Second, it is impossible to achieve efficient um, level consistent HE packing for Z2K. And followingly, this shows the importance of a trick uh, suggested in Mega Z2K to bypass some drawback of level dependent packings in uh, reshare protocol. So we call a packing method surjective if any element of polynomial ring is a valid packing for some messages. Uh, surjectivity is des desirable since if not, a malicious packer might uh, leverage this invalid packings in protocols. Uh, our theorem says we cannot pack more than the number of linear factors of quotient um, polynomial modulo P to the K. Uh, first, our theorem implies that it is impossible to uh, construct any surjective HE packing for uh, Z to K. And followingly, this shows the importance of a concept named zero knowledge proof of message knowledge, uh, suggested in Megahertz to K, which proved that a ciphertext contains a validly packed message. Okay, so summary. Uh, we, we, we initiated the uh, formal and unified study of polynomial packing, which appears in various contexts, including uh, homomorphic encryption, uh, somewhat homomorphic encryption based multi party computation, and information theoretical MPC, and also zero knowledge. Then we proved upper bound on packing density and the possibility results regarding level consistency and surjectivity.
Um, our results have implications on SHE-based MPC over Z2K, namely optimality and some justific justifications of techniques used in megahertz 2 k And implications on HE packing that heli packing is optimal if we want ZPK message space and level consistency. And also implications on upper bound on rate of RMFE. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, I want to say something about why I think this work is interesting. First, a packing is not a question as before secure computation, uh, since messages are static in traditional crypto systems like vanilla public key encryption. Uh, we do not have to worry about algebraic structure of the message space. Second, packing is a question shared by secure computation primitives such as HE, uh, MPC, and zero knowledge. Uh, in this regime, uh, messages are dynamic and, of course, algebraic structure of message space matters. And I believe uh, that there are more questions of like this, namely, which is not a question asked before secure computation, and but is a question shared by secure computation primitives. And this must be especially visible when we try to apply secure computation to real life problems, um, seeking practical usability. And that's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Kiwu. Um, any question for him? We have quite a bit of time. No, no one. I'll shoot one first and then let's see if someone else. Um, yes, so. Have you also looked at uh, applications of your CRM outside of cryptography? Because this kind of embedding techniques, they, they look a lot like uh, what is done, for example, by, by Harvey and Van der Poel uh, for uh, integer multiplication in times and log n, or all mm -hmm. this kind of uh, algebra, computational algebra. So, um, No, not, not really. So that will be interesting direction, future direction. Yeah. OK. Anything else? Okay, so let's uh, thank Kiwu again and uh, welcome our next speaker.